okay, I, I want to start my presentation with saying that I want to change the title of my talk. It okay. says UHPC hyphen FRC. I think I should remove FRC because it's redundant. We know that to use UHPC for structure, you must have fibers. So I want to change my, uh, and I also want to mention that uh, most of the work I'm presenting was done at Hong Kong Polytechnic University where Jian Go Dai, I worked with him, he is now the chair of the department and also I'm the honorary professor at uh, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Uh, I have shown here stress strain curve in compression of UHPC. Interesting to note that this was done in 1994 and the cylinders for this test were sent to my laboratory from Denmark. As many of you know, Alborg cement was one of the first one to use a, a, a so-called ultra high strength concrete. They don't call it that. Notice that we were able to obtain a stable post-peak response, even with the compressive strength of 200 megapascal, but post-peak is almost vertical. That means that we cannot use UHPC without fibers so that we have some ductility. And as far as uh, right now, fibers is the only way you can increase ductility or toughness. Although now the work research is being done to manipulate uh, material at nanostructure to improve the ductility. Uh, and as Professor Naman, oh, I, I forgot to mention uh, Tony that uh, by acknowledging Tony contributed quite a bit and he spent many hours with uh, Professor Dai in improving this presentation. So Tony presented on steel fibers and I'm going to talk about uh, synthetic fibers. And here I have shown stress strain curve in tension of specimen which were reinforced with 2% PVA fibers. The diameter was 14 micron and length is two millimeter long. And you can see that we have a strain hardening response. And as far as I know, this is one of the first one where we had strain hardening response. And what is important we define strain hardening as, as Tony mentioned, maximum localization strain, that is the strain at the maximum tensile strength. Very important, especially for durability, that you have a sequential multiple cracking until crack localization so that crack widths are smaller. And I will refer back to that. So historically, there are two separate developments. One which is ultra high strength concrete where emphasis was how do we get very high compressive strength while other is strain hardening cement composite as we know rylam has a committee on that and the here is how can we obtain strain hardening response with sequential multiple cranking uh, so that's what we want to uh, discuss so here we have more recently in the last few years there's been a lot of work using synthetic fibers and i'm only talking about uhpc strain hardening response so all of this synthetic fiber strain hardening and many things are plotted but if you look at compressive strength where i marked with the red and tensile peak tensile strain at peak stress you call it localization strain and if you look at the highest compressive strength in this group is 211 megapascal and it was obtained with 2% polyester, high density polyester fiber and 1% uh, steel. On the other end, the highest tensile strain, this is the work I'm gonna report later, is 11%. And most of the work, although the different fibers are used, are using uh, uh, high density polyethylene fibers. Uh, I have shown properties of the fibers that were used that I mentioned in the earlier slide. Most of the strain hardening work done is with PVA fibers, but UHPC strain hardening, most of it is done with polyester. And you can see the modulus of PE fiber is substantially higher than PVA. And the tensile strength of the fiber themselves is very comparable 
to that of steel. So now I want to present the work done by the group of uh, Professor Dai at Hong Kong, and I'm going to present results on uniaxial tensile test. And as you can see, we, we divide the strain is measured, as uh, Tony Naman mentioned, by taking the gauge length uh, displacement. And so as long as the cracks are uniformly distributed and no localization, then this definition of strain is valid. After localization, of course, by as the definition, strains are localized, so we don't talk about it. So the properties of the fiber that were used at uh, uh, Professor Dye's group are shown here. Most important are the aspect ratio. And I think with the development of SCC, we were able to obtain high aspect ratio and 2% of volume, uh, which is quite important. Uh, the other things are listed here too. Uh, matrix is very similar to what other people use for UHPC using particle packing concept. Uh, certainly silica fume and slag, and very low water to binder ratio as shown in the bottom. So I want to show you now some of the results. These are the results, as I mentioned, the fiber polyester shown earlier. Notice that the peak tensile strength is close to 20 megapascal, and strain, peak strain or localization strain is 8%. 8%, so that's, that's, that's quite high. Uh, and uh, here we had, we had used fibers with different length and diameter for the same volume as uh, many of you know, aspect ratio plays a key role. So highest tensile strength had the aspect ratio of, uh, of 900 where you get 8% tensile strain. Very important, obviously is that during the strain hardening process, you have more and more cracks as you strain more and more, and these are called sequential multiple cracking. This is very important, no localization until the peak. That means, as I will show later, uh, we find a crack grit. Uh, because of the high aspect ratio and high density matrix, many places we notice fibers were fractured and this is obviously important because also as i mentioned the tensile strength of pe fiber were comparable to that of steel uh, i have now here shown a comparison with both steel and synthetic fiber so to your left is the compressive strength versus tensile strength so if you should look at the top left hand corner they're primarily with the steel fiber very high compressive strength but tensile strain is not as high. And our current research, my present research, the compressive strength was about 130 megapascal, but tensile strain capacity was more than 8%. To the right, I also shown tensile strength versus tensile strain. Uh, and you can, I think, to near showed that too. But important thing here is that our work with the synthetic fibers, we will have to obtain high tensile strength as well as high tensile strain. Now, in many applications, and Liberatio Ferrara from Milano indicated that, that durability is very important for UHPC, whether it's a breach test, thin coating. So what we want is high tensile strain in the service and low crack width. So we need a relationship to predict, relate tensile strain with crack width. So this is a, one approach we did using a Bible type of, uh, of probability distribution. So what here are shown is five different strain level. A is just as you call it first cracking and E is the localization and then using DIC, we measured for each of them number of cracks and crack width, and then average it for three specimens. So, so the, these results are shown here. Uh, very interesting. So, look at the strain A, B, C, D, E. As I mentioned, E is the localization, A is the cracking, and then number of cracks in different crack width range, zero to 15 micron 
the last 9200 microns and so on. And the Weibull parameter A and K are the shape uh, and the uh, uh, parameter. And we found that the K is more or less same. So we assume a constant value, average value of K in order to predict, uh, to come up with a viable distribution. And so this is the equation we, using viable distribution, constant value of K, but the shape factor uh, was uh, determined by two parameter A and B. And you can see that you can predict WO for a given tensile strain. So the, this results, are very interesting are shown here. So we have shown, of course, tensile stress strain curve. And for each strain level, probabilistic distribution, viable. Uh, and I think I didn't mention in the last slide, I had also shown correlation factor, and which was very high. And there are three lines shown here for different probability. So let's say that you want, and this has happened in design, let's say nuclear power or in storage of uh, hazardous waste. We, we know that if you keep crack with less than 100 micron, then you have almost impermeable concrete, but impermeable to uh, the gas as well as liquid and ion. So for example, if you look at this, and if you want 100 micron crack with, and let's say you want a 99% probability that, so then you, the tensile strain would be uh, close to 2.5%. Uh, so that would be the allowable tensile strain under service life. So I think that what I want to conclude with that is that so far we had a separate development, ultra high strength concrete. And if you look at the research or other publication, they rarely mention the tensile uh, strain uh, or even not often not mention the stress strain curve in compression, but emphasis primarily on strain. In strain hardening, obviously talk about how, uh, how uh, strain hardening and multiple cracking. So I think now to get structure, uh, UHPC structures, high deformation capability, and low crack width, we have to have UHPC with strain hardening, either using steel fiber or synthetic. Thank you. That's my last slide.